Hey everyone, it's Nurse Howie, and I am in quarantine. Self-quarantine. If you haven't been living under a rock, you know that everybody's under quarantine, especially here in California. Um, we're well, not especially here everywhere <laughs> in the world. That's why it's called a pandemic, not just an epidemic. And let me tell you, I have uh, probably taken care of a couple of COVID patients already. Um, I think there's something about, uh, geez, I need to really get up on my data, but there's something about 100 to 300 confirmed cases in Los Angeles alone. And that doesn't include the people who are probably, but we don't know, are infected. So here I am in my apartment and I'm just chilling what was supposed to have been my week-long um, birthday vacation it's my 40th birthday oh my god I'm old and it's a uh, time for me to actually I was gonna go skiing with some friends and we had a whole thing reserved we had the ski lodge reserved and it had like a fancy ski jacket and some fancy boots that I bought on Amazon and have my fancy snowboard and I was gonna get crazy and get some fun and you know the big bar oh and you know decades birthday and kind of a thing but now I'm here alone and um, in the middle of myself <laughs> anyway so um, it's kind of triggered a thing in me because I do enjoy um, uh, neuro telly and enjoy stroke units and calling code strokes and um, trying to help somebody who's getting a heart attack but I think I'm really getting back to um, step down PCU and then I'm gonna go back to ICU because they seem like they really really need it and so I signed up for a travel assignment for a short one for like about two weeks and um, it was a crisis response uh, job calling and I, I asked for the call and I did the paperwork but I followed up today, it turns out that they've already been filled and it wasn't as much of a need as I thought it was, so here's hoping because my next assignment is going to be in step down and I was trying to hope to fit that crisis assignment in prior to starting my next assignment because I'm finished with this one and it was a good one. I feel a lot more comfortable being a travel nurse and I'm learning more stuff and I'm becoming more competent, at least I believe. Um, I'm not hearing much complaints um, and for the most important part I think is that I'm getting a little bit more self-confidence and that self-confidence which is very small line between that and arrogance but I hope that I'm coming across as confident not arrogant but I'm commanding a little bit of respect I think from my fellow nurses and administrators and whatnot and um, even some of the doctors even though I don't think the doctors that I work with was very good um, because they were very like annoyed all the time you know I don't know if the hospital wasn't treating them well or you know if you're gonna be a doctor you know that you have to do on call and people are going to be calling on you and depending on you like me as a nurse in the middle of the night if it's somebody's having trouble breathing or they have a change in their status and they're just kind of like not all there and or they're hemodynamically unstable I'm gonna call you in the middle of the night I'm gonna call you at 3 a.m. I don't give a crud you know but if that makes you pissed off then I'm sorry or I try to limit my calls to something a little bit more important and nothing that's not not important you know because I know the doctor's trying to sleep but usually in many other hospitals the doctors are in the hospital I think this particular hospital the doctors were at home and so they got bothered when people would call them and I'm like I'm sorry you're a doctor that's your job you know I don't feel bad that's the one thing I don't feel bad about trying to become a doctor is that Oh, God, they just lead some terribly miserable lives, some of them. And they hate it. And you can tell. You can tell that they hate it. And sometimes I come to work and I gotta, I gotta be honest. Sometimes I'm like, God, I don't want to be here right now. And, you know, like, I wish I was hanging out with my friends. And, you know, what the thing is, is that you feel like you're grasping morality there. Like the end of the morality. Like every day, you know, like, you know, people don't want to think about that stuff. They want to do like their computer job or their art job and they just kind of want to, you know, um, you know, 
work with things that are stable, that are that are static and more concrete, you know. But every day we have to have like death in our face, like suffering and annoyance and complaints and scared and fear and anxiety and, and like that makes you anxious and it makes me anxious sometimes when I walk from the parking lot to the hospital and I'm just like it's a short minute but it's a long distance <laughs> metaphorically speaking and it just gets kind of tiring and I can see why people get really tired of bedside care but you know what after a couple days or a couple nights I start to feel like okay you know like let me have a perfect shift tonight shift tonight and try to make things perfect and I make it like a excuse, and I make it like a game and I really try to learn something and if I learn something I try to apply it to whatever I'm doing but I, I gotta tell you I, I do make some huge mistakes you know like uh, lately I lost a telly box <laughs> like I was discharging a patient they were so ready to be discharged and I wasn't expecting them to be discharged usually we don't discharge people at night I mean people usually just go to bed but um, apparently I don't know if they realize it but um, the doctors feel like they're very stable enough that they don't have to stay in the hospital but the emergency room physician admitted them anyway and so when the doctors came to assess them the patient was probably fine and they had terrible insurance and so the doctors told us to you know discharge the patient and it really sucks because it's not fair for the patient and it wasn't fair for me so I try to get them out as fast as I can and they're complaining because they have to go work at 5 a.m. the next morning so I just tried to do the best that I could the fast as I could and then I didn't realize that they had the telemetry monitor box in them now they didn't leave the hospital with it and the I'm sorry let me explain the telemetry box is that thing where um, people have uh, it on their heart they have leads in the heart and not the all the EKG leads but about half of it and it helps us look into the telemetry monitor machine and keep an eye out on their heart rhythms and how they're doing and if they have a heart attack or some kind of arrhythmia that we can do something about um, you know we definitely take a look at it and we have a monitor tech and I also take a look at it and monitor the patients as well so it's kind of an expensive equipment <laughs> so I forgot it and I did everything right in the checklist but it doesn't say anything about you checking to make sure you have all your equipment so I took out the IV from the patient give them the education make sure they had all their stuff with them and then send them out and they were ha very happy to have left but they were kind of still perplexed as to why they were kicked out so early when they were just and I had just finished settling them in but I talked to the doctor and and he was just like just kick just discharge them already you know so I was like I gotta do what I gotta do I gotta do what they tell me to do and then I forgot so that spread around the entire unit and that was right before my vacation to Mexico and um, you know when I came back everybody's like hey don't forget that telly box or hey you know make sure you got that telly box back and blah 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 and I felt like a complete idiot you know everybody everybody knew from the, all the nurses from the night shift to the day shift to even central monitoring I was so embarrassed but you know what I could only be embarrassed for a certain amount of days and you know, and never do it again. And I would, you know, check, double check to make sure I still had the telly box. But the one thing I'm, I'm, I tell myself is that at least I didn't hurt the patient. You know, so that's a good thing. I, I didn't, you know, infuse the patient with anything wrong, which is my worst nightmare. And um, you know, the patient didn't get hurt, or you know, worse comes to worse and die. So, or worse, worse than that have some kind of long-lasting permanent damage all right so let's <laughs> God, I can't believe I'm in. talking about the worst stories but anyway so to get ready for the ICU hold on a second let me change this microphone sorry where was I okay so uh, today I wanted to focus on a little bit of the ventilator modes which has always confused me for the longest time but I pretty much get it and basically as a nurse you just have to realize what you have to do to troubleshoot and you know we can talk about the alarms whether it's a low pressure alarm or a high pressure alarm but for the most part the vent control modes is something that can really really go deep deep into it and I leave that to the respiratory techs they're amazing and they spend years just studying nothing but respiratory function and that to me is 
uh, very fascinating. Um, it's just similar to basically um, like cardiac nursing, like CVICU nursing, where you just kind of see a lot of the blood flow and everything going in and out of the heart. It's amazing. You know, it depends, depends on elasticity and um, what was that law? It was like star or something law god i forgot um but you know the lungs has a certain amount of compliance too and that drives what uh, what ventilator modes we have to give to these patients and as you know ventilators are very important because of the coronavirus and we need ventilators there's really no such thing as an icu without a ventilator so it's very very important so so ventilator settings and there's i made some here boop um just very basic general definitions because if you start to go way deep into it it kind of like ruins my brain and um you know i'll go off in another video where it's a little bit more in depth um as much as i can handle but you know of course again the respiratory therapist is the best uh person to talk to about these things or your pulmonologist um i see you pulmonologist so volume modes there's two volume modes there's a i'm sorry there's a volume and there's a pressure pressure mode so volume pressure volume pressure your doctor will decide or your nurse practitioner or, or PA or whoever will decide what settings to leave the vent so I just worry about volume or pressure control so there's two modes so there's two settings there's volume and pressure but there's two modes two to three modes each that I really worry about so the first one for ventilator modes uh, for the sorry, for the volume modes is a assist control mode and the synchronized intermittent mandatory volume mode. You get that? So there's assist control and there's synchronized intermittent mandatory volume. Then for pressure modes, there's pressure control and pressure support. You get that? Once again, it's pressure control and pressure support. So volume mode, we've got assist control and synchronized intermittent mandatory volume, SIMV, SIMV. And we have, for pressure, we have pressure control and pressure support. Pressure is easier because there's just pressure in there. So really, if you think it way too deep into it, you start to get muddled. But if you just look at the definition and the terminology, you kind of get what you need. So for volume modes, and there's assist control, and it assists a patient with inspired air, I think it is. Yeah, it gives it the full tidal volume. It's set, and it gives you the respiration rate, and it's all automatic. So AC is just all automatic. It's an assist control. I just think of it as automatic control. And the ventilator, the ventilator machine does everything. Whereas if it's synchronized intermittent mandatory volume, then you've got a volume, but the set number of breath is synchronized to assist and try to go with the patient's breathing, go with the patient's own breathing, you know? So with a CISC automatic control, the patient's just hopefully riding the vent, which means that the patient's just going where the vent is going, just letting the vent do its job. But with synchronized intermittent mandatory volume, you're helping to wean the patient, you're trying to let the patient have some uh, work on their own to try to get them to get off the ventilator and get deintubated. All right, or extubated rather. So with the pressure mode, uh, it gets a little bit more complicated. I think it's with patients who have a little bit more trouble with the lung elasticity. You know, you're gonna give them the, the all the volume and all the respiratory uh, respiration rate that you want, but if there's no gas exchange in there, it's not gonna be um, effective. You know, either they're having trouble with gas exchange or if there's like an obstruction or some kind of a fusion or, um, uh, you know, like some kind of, a trouble you know like people people with COPD so you're gonna want to have to uh, be able to balance um, and kind of work with the patient's lung compliance so you've got the pressure mode you've got pressure control and that's where you don't have a set tidal volume but you have a set pressure and this pressure might be a little bit above PEEP which you want to keep under 8 and we'll talk about that later but PEEP is positive and expiratory pressure and that's the kind of pressure that you want down there to be able to open up the alveoli but you uh, research shows that keeping the alveoli open all the time is not that good for the patient but we'll talk about that again later but there's pressure control so you're really just setting the pressure but um, it's when your patient does have a, a peak inspiratory pressure so you have a pressure that's not really enough to get down there so you need to deliver a set amount of pressure and just make sure that it really gets all the way around inside the patient's lung 
And um, then you have pressure support. So you've got, that's the weaning section. So there's a cyst where it assists a patient with every spontaneous breath. So the ventilator kind of looks to see what the patient is breathing and then it supports the patient. And that's when you're trying to wean the patient out. And um, we'll talk about that later. So just know that there's two types. There's volume and pressure is what you're looking at. And each has two main modes. There's a lot more, but this is what we're thinking about. The volume has what? AC assist control mode. And then you've also got synchronized intermittent mandatory volume. So that's SIMV. So a volume has an AC and SIMV mode, whereas pressure has pressure control and pressure support mode. And just like two sides of a coin, this is like a coin, um, volume has the control, complete automatic, that's a assist control um, mode. And then you have the nice uh, SIMV mode, which is a synchronized intermittent mandatory volume mode to help wean the patient. So. This patient is completely dependent on the ventilator, AC mode. This patient is starting to get a little bit better, wants to breathe on their own. Then you go into SIMV mode. All right, now we'll go to pressure. So pressure control, this patient can not only breathe, but they're not getting enough pressure. And so you go into pressure control mode and you want to get a little bit stronger and try to make this person's um, lung get get. Um, more compliant and have a little bit more expenditure of space so that you can have more gas exchange and so that can be a little bit damaging in the long run when the patient starts to get better they might kind of try to fight it or it might cause damage so then you want to go to a nicer mode which is a pressure support mode where you're just kind of letting the patient initiate the spontaneous breaths and then the machine will support that breath you know so volume control a volume is uh, AC mode and SIMV mode to be nice and you're trying to wean the patient off and then pressure you've got pressure control very controlling and then you turn it around and it's pressure support and it's much more supportive than it is controlling all right so that's basically what I've got for ventilator modes we'll leave it at that I have a lot more uh, studying to do and um, you know trying to not befuddle my brain if you have any questions or if you want to talk about something more specific Leave a comment, like and subscribe below, let me know, take care of yourself, social distance, be good, don't be stagnant, and um, like and subscribe. See you again, Nurse Howie. Bye-bye.